Well, we are ready to begin. Do you want me to sit here? Oh, that's, that's perfect. Are we pre-rolling? Great, 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 great. Okay, so why don't you just introduce yourself? I'm Felicia Day. You hired me? Of course. Is this your first time doing an internet video, Miss Day? No. Great, well then you know how this works. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope has been studying galaxies colliding, and they've hired us to make an educational film to promote it. Sounds good. I haven't read the script yet. They just gave it to me a few moments ago. Roll camera. Let's try and get this in one take, people. Flunky, put up the image. And action. Hi, I'm Felicia Day. As you know, colliding galaxies sure are scary. They're scary. The script is down there, not up here. But now, uh, the Spitzer Space Telescope has made discoveries that shed new light on the supernatural phenomenon. Okay, supernatural is a bit much. Cue the graphic. Was that an explosion? That Miss Day was the sound of millions of voices crying out in terror and suddenly silenced. In other words, galaxies colliding. Do you even know what it means for galaxies to collide? Well, I'm sure it's something like when cars collide, only, you know, hundreds of times bigger. You know, we are on a timetable here, so. Okay, first of all, galactic mergers are pretty common in the universe. Most large galaxies are formed out of smaller galaxies merging together. Fascinating. Again, the point is that you seem to think that it's destructive, like millions of stars smashing into each other. But in reality, there is so much space between stars that it's extremely unlikely that any two of them would ever collide. So while gravity may toss them around into new orbits, they'll all pretty much survive intact. Okay, fine. Funky, lose the explosion. Oh yeah, much more dynamic. I actually think it looks pretty cool. I'm hearing a lot of talking and not a lot of script reading. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Let's see, uh, galaxies are scary, supernatural phenomenon. Oh, okay, uh, oh, here we go. But I'll bet you'll want to know what Spitzer has discovered, right, Sean Astin? I like stars. Insert tape number two. What in the name of Joss Whedon was that? We couldn't afford to hire both you and Sean, so we edited together one of his audiobooks. Accuse Sean Astin again. I like stars. Insert tape number two. Boy, I like stars too, Sean. But did you know that the Andromeda Galaxy is actually on a collision course with our own galaxy, the Milky Way? Wow, what will happen then? My friend Felicia of Day. I'm glad you asked, Sean. When our galaxies collide, all life on the planet Earth will be wiped out and, well, you know, that's just completely wrong. Cut! Miss Day, how many North Pasadena Film Festival Awards have you won? Well, I haven't really... Oh, okay. That's very impressive. So why don't we leave the film directing to the professionals, all right? I just don't think you quite have a grasp on the science. Here, let me help. Flunky, can you put up the Spitzer Iraq picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, please? Andromeda is about 2.5 million light years away, so it's not going to collide with the Milky Way for a very long time. How long? Opinions vary, but an estimate puts it around 3 billion years. That's a lot of billions. Yeah. Three. The point is that we don't have to worry about it anytime soon. And when it does finally happen, the worst thing we have to worry about is our constellations getting mixed up a little bit. But I like our constellations. Stars are always moving, so it's not like our constellations stay the same for very long anyway. You are really messing with my G. You know what's great about this picture? Is that we can see a hole in the bottom right of the galaxy. Astronomers think that's where another smaller galaxy already collided and punched through Andromeda. Again, the stars weren't destroyed. Gravity just moved them away and... Okay, I got it. We're not all gonna die. <sighs> Once again, Felicia Day sucks all the excitement out of our film. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. You know what, we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on page three. Let's go, people, we are losing daylight. You know we're indoors, right? Action. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, no. Oh, but when, well, but what happens to the central cores of galaxies when they collide? Do they blow up Felicia? 
Hi, I'm Sean Astin. No, they don't blow up, Sean. But some people believe that the two supermassive black holes in the centers of these galaxies will try to consume each other, creating a time paradox. Okay, is there really anybody who believes that? Oh, please, Felicia Day, correct us once again. That'll be so fun. There might be supermassive black holes in the centers of some galaxies, but they're not going to create time paradoxes. Like anyone's going to journey to the center of the galaxy and prove us wrong. Okay, let me show you something. Flunky, can you put up an image from Dr. Henrik Spohn's research? This is an artist's concept of something that Spitzer discovered a little while back. Spitzer detected the formation of tiny crystals in the centers of some galaxies. Crystals? Like diamonds? more like crushed glass. It was the first time that silicate crystals had been discovered in a galaxy outside our own. When the galaxies merged, the crystals were kicked up into a virtual sandstorm of dusty glass, enveloping the nucleus of each galaxy. Sandstorms of glass in the center of the galaxies. <gasps> that is intriguing. That just goes to show you, they don't have to make up explosions or doomsday scenarios to make science interesting. Astronomy is pretty interesting on its own. I think even Sean Astin would agree with me. The Earth is blue and has clouds. You and Sean are right. I guess I've just been so focused that I lost sight of what this film is really all about. The, the science. I've learned a really important lesson here today. So do you want to rework the script and maybe finish this off later? I, I don't think that's necessary. I think you've given us so much great astronomical science already that we can put together a pretty darn good educational film. I think you'll put together a great educational film. Do you validate? Good evening, and welcome to the world premiere of our film, produced for NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. Now, for those of you who read the original script, this, um, this final product may not be exactly what you're expecting, but I, I think you're going to enjoy it just the same. After all, who doesn't like Felicia Day, huh? And, uh, and Sean Astin, he's season it too, kind of. And we are, um, as you may have heard, having some issues with the Spitzer Space Telescope people not wanting to use our film. They say it's too sensational or something. I'm sure we'll come to some arrangements soon. In the meantime, Funky, if you wouldn't mind just going ahead and rolling the projector. When galaxies collide, astronomers say that they can combine into a single, much larger galaxy. But just how safe are we? Felicia Day knows a lot about colliding galaxies. Felicia Day warned us it's happened before and Felicia Day says it will happen again. Galactic mergers are pretty common. In fact, the Andromeda Galaxy has already collided with at least one other galaxy. And we're next. But how long will it take until Andromeda collides with us? Around three billion years. Sounds like plenty of time, right? In the history of the universe, it's the blink of an eye. But when our galaxies collide, could anything dangerous get stirred up? Crushed glass? Crushed glass? Ouch. The crystals were kicked up into a virtual sandstorm of dusty glass. Sounds pretty painful, Felicia. At night, we would sit under the stars. I'm glad you like stars, Sean, because when our galaxies collide, there may be a lot more of them. The worst thing we have to worry about is our constellations getting mixed up a little bit. Well, who cares if our constellations change, right? Oh wait, don't sailors look to the stars for direction? The ancient Greeks used stars for navigation. Someone better warn the Argonauts. You know what's great about this... Not a whole lot, Felicia. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. We're up in the sky watching. Always watching. I'm Sean Astin. Thanks for listening to my audiobook.